right. Time bar debt disclosures. Proposed time bar debt and revival disclosures were not finalized. Too many concerns, burden on the debt collectors and confusion to consumer. So what they're saying here, with the time bar debt, um, they proposed that disclosures were supposed to be made, but they haven't finalized on that. There's only comments because the burden of proof, as we know, is on he who that is bringing the claim, right? But they're complaining now that it's gonna to be too much of a burden on the debt collectors and it's gonna confuse the consumer. So there's still ambiguity here. So now where ambiguity is, I say you exert the things that you want. So you take over this part as it um, relates to time bar debt disclosures and you enforce it the way you wanna enforce it because <clears throat> the law isn't clear on that. So if you take that part over and demand what you want, who knows, you might start seeing some remedies. And when it comes to time bar debts, or as some people know it and call it statute of limitations, each state has different statute of limitations. So the statute of limitations for collecting on certain debts is different from New York, than Missouri, than Atlanta, I mean, than Georgia, than Connecticut, like it's all different. And these are just some examples of state that has time bar debt like California, Connecticut, North Carolina, Texas, West Virginia, Massachusetts, New Mexico, New York, Vermont, New York City, and the city of Yonkers. All right, so the CFPB encourages debt collectors to disclose anyway. So you see this word? It says encourages. So it is not fact. It is not law that they have to do it. They encourage it, but they didn't say you must do it. So if a debt collector reserved the right to disclose, it's not a violation because the CFPB only says they encourage it. It's not mandatory. But in many circumstances, disclosures can effectively cure the potential deception associated with the collection of time bar debt, which is absolutely true. Because let's say you're coming up on, um, let's say a credit card debt and you're in the state of New York and it's six years and then you're at um, five years, um, 300 days and a debt collector just popped out of nowhere and they threaten you with legal action, we're gonna bring you to court, all of that stuff to start over the statute of limitation. But not only that, in their deceptive correspondence, you now went ahead to pay that alleged debt. Well, what that simply means is it's a violation of the law because what they're saying is, now you they gotta tell you this. So when it comes to that part where you're coming up on the statute of limitation. They cannot do any deceptive marketing, any deceptive means of communication to bring you back with the statute of limitation. Now, other prohibited practices, no passive collection parking. So there's a word now that they use, it's called debt parking, right? And what, some of you might be hearing this for the first time, but I'm gonna go into more and explain what debt parking is. So they can't, this is law now, this is law. And this is gonna change the game. And let me show you, when I read this, I was like, no, they did not. <clears throat> I'm gonna drop, drop a huge gem. I'm gonna drop a whole diamond right now. <clears throat> no passive collection, all right, we know that. Can't report a debt to credit reported agencies. So <clears throat> N NCLC have credit reporting agency. It's not credit reporting agency. This is consumer. And we need to get into the habit, consumer reporting agencies of using the correct word, right? So can't report a debt to consumer reporting agencies before, listen, listen, listen to words coming out of my mouth right now. Can't report a debt to a consumer reporting agency before first contacting the consumer. Do y'all understand what Congress just did? What if a collector sends to a consumer and after no notice of undeliverability in 14 days, 
reports to the CRAs, but then on the 15th day, they um, return as undeliverable. So this part is very important. So the law gives them 14 days, right? So if you receive the mail, you must send it back within that time frame. If it gets delivered to them on the 15th day, well, they're in compliance. So everything you're doing must be done in the 14 day window. Because on the 15th day, there's a rule called the safe harbor rule, which now protects them. And they're able to put it on the consumer report. Because Congress said, if they didn't get the undeliverability in 14 days, then <clears throat> they can assume now that the consumer received the notice or the correspondence. So on the 15th day, they can now put it on the report. So it's important that y'all are, and you're telling your clients that y'all need to be on top of your mail because when these things come in, you gotta send it right back. Because if it hits the 15 day and they didn't get the undeliverability, then they can put it on there. That's a caveat to that. All right, credit report can park and rule continue. Exclusion, prohibition on passive collection does not apply to a debt collector furnishing of information about a debt to a nationwide specialty consumer reporting agency that complies with uh, complies and maintains information on a consumer's check writing history. So basically they're making it very specific. They're talking about check systems. That rule, the parking rule for the 14 days, it doesn't apply if they're reporting to check systems. They can do it. Congress gave them the right to report to check systems or other consumer uh, reporting agencies that maintains information on a consumer's check writing history. So check systems is one that the rule, they excluded from the rule. All right, validation notices, organization. Methods for sending validation information, right? Uh, we're gonna go into definitions, required validation information, form of validation information, translation into other languages. So methods for sending. Um, in writing, of course, so they can do in writing, which is your regular paper snail mail, mm -hmm. or they can go electronically and electronically now covers um, emails, DMs, social media, all of that stuff the initial communication or within five days of the initial communication, orally in the initial communication except um, exceptions, collector not required to provide validation information if the consumer paid the debt prior to the expiration of the fifth day period. So basically the disclosures that they must give under um, the disclosures that they must give under the validation of debt section, if the consumer pays the debt within five days of the initial communication, they don't have to send it. And in writing or electronically, so the valid, so what you can do is write down 1006.34a, um, and this is the section that speaks on validation of debt, and it's gonna give you a lot more information. Like I said, this is only an overview it, the law is much more extensive than this. 